Hi, welcome to this video on how to write the perfect report. This is for the GCSE English language writing exam. This is for the WeJack exam board, but you could use this for any of the other exam boards for the writing exam. Okay, so here are all the other kinds of um, writing format you could get in the exam. I've done videos on all the other ones, so have a look at them. So the question we're going to look at in this exam, and this is actually taken from a real exam question, is your college or school is looking for ways to improve. Your principal has asked you to write a report suggesting how the college could be improved. Write your report for the principal. So a lot of the times when you get an exam question, it will be for your school or for your college. So first of all, what is a report? And there's a little example from a police report of someone who called up asking how to legally kill someone. So a report, it's a formal document, and we'll go into, into that phrase a little bit more. A report is a formal document that gives information or advice. And then just this picture here was a report on a school, how a school could improve, and then he said the equipment, facilities, and buildings needed to be improved. So your report will be for a college, so the college that you go to, or a school that you go to, or a company, but it would probably be for a school or a college that you go to. So basically that means you're writing for a person you don't know, or a person that you don't know in an informal way. So you might know your principal or head teacher, however you would be very formal with them. And they will act upon what you say, so if they're asking you to do a report on how the school or college could be improved, they're going to look at your findings and probably going to act on them and change whatever you decide that should be changed. So formal, so we need to know what formal is as in a way the report is different from all the other kinds of writing format. All the other ones, letter, review, speech, can be written in the same kind of way really because most of them are going to be to teenagers, people of your own age, so you can be fairly informal. Even on a letter, but you're going to be formal you can still talk almost like you're having a conversation. However, with the report, the big difference to all the other ones is how formal it is, almost like you're writing and you're involved in the business. So for example here, could I order the sausages please? That is formal. The bottom right lady, the old lady saying, can I have bangs and mash, that's informal. So the, the lady here, uh, middle left, says, good afternoon, how are you? Well, the guy below says, hi, a what's up? So good afternoon is the formal, hi, a what's up is the informal. And then top right, the lady says, could you tell me the way to get to the station? Again, that's formal. Well, the guy underneath her says, where's the station from here? Informal. So if you're, not, if you're struggling with formal or informal, you should just maybe think about it as a dress code. So formal is very sort of posh and business-like with a suit, and informal would be you going out in vest, flip-flops and shorts. So we want to go to the formal side with this report. So this means instead of using maybe language you would use with your friends, you would use language that you would use if you were going to the bank or to the doctor or writing a, writing a really important essay. So how can you make your writing formal? So you should be polite in its tone. You should be correctly punctuated. It should use ambitious vocabulary. You should use connectives, which are things like therefore, firstly, however, in comparison, in summary. And you shouldn't use slang, okay? So if we look at the question again, your college is asking you to write a report on how the college could be improved. And then you've got to write the report. So it says here we're writing a report to the principal. So the person who is in control of the college or school. So structure. So how are we going to structure a report? So remember a letter is addresses and things like that. A speech would be good afternoon. Um, an article you might have subheadings. So how are we going to structure a report? Okay, so... Number one, you're going to have a clear and formal title. So with a with a, a review or an article, you may try to use alliteration or come up with a catchy title. So you wouldn't want to do the here, as this is almost a business report. So you just do a clear and simple title. Then you would want an introduction, and in your introduction, you would make it clear who you are, who you're writing the report for, and what's it about. Three you're going to have, say some problems. So, so say for example the problems at school, you might say that they are understaffed, you might say the catering isn't very good. 
Then in your next paragraph, you would say solution. So the problems that you've talked about, say for example, if it is catering, well, in this paragraph, you're going to say, in your opinion, how are you going to solve the catering problem? Maybe you're going to get more employees. Maybe you're going to switch to a different kitchen, whatever. And then number five, you're going to do a short conclusion just saying, in summary, here are my findings. Um, if you act upon them, I believe this college will have been will have been improved or something like that. Okay, and in a report, you're going to use headings and subheadings for each part. So problems. Let's go into problems a bit bit more detail. So in this section, you're going to say what problems there are at your school or college. So take a second now. So 30 seconds or pause the video and just maybe come up with three or four things that you think are problems at your school or college. Okay, so I've brought up, and remember this is fictional, I'm not doing this about any particular college. I'm going to say the food at one of the college isn't very nice and there's problems with the food. I'm going to say the student union at the college isn't very good. Yeah, it could be improved. And my third thing is I'm going to say that there's no parking for the students. The students feel... Um, devotimated, the students feel undervalued because there's no parking for them. Okay, so they're my three things food, student union, and parking. And remember, like every piece of writing you're going to do, one point per paragraph. So, what I mean by that is that you don't write about the problems about food and the student union and parking in one big paragraph. You do three or four sentences for food, three or four sentences for student union, and three or four sentences on parking, all in different paragraphs. Okay, don't put it all in just one big chunk. Okay, so the solutions, so in other words, how are we going to solve the problem with student union? How are we going to solve the problem with parking? And how are we going to solve the problem with food? So like I said, in this paragraph, you're going to recommend how to solve the problems. So if we look at a report structure, and I'll go over this A grade essay, A grade report in the middle of the report structure in a second. But first of all, we've got a formal title, which is Report on College Improvements. Then I've got subheadings for each of them, so formal subheadings. So my four subheadings are Introduction, Problems, Solutions and Conclusion, literally just what we just talked about in the plan. Then I've done my paragraph on my first problem which is the catering a paragraph on my second problem which is the student union and a paragraph on my third problem which is the parking again i've done three or four sentences on each one i haven't just shoved it in a big chunk then my next paragraph is the solutions and i've done bullet points here so you didn't you wouldn't have to do bullet points but i've done two or three sentences or one or two sentences on each problem said how i'm going to solve them and um, I put them in bullet points. So for example, actually I'll read through the exam, I'll read through the report first before we do that. And then I've done a conclusion saying, in summary, these are the three things that need to be acted on. If they are, the college will improve its performance. Okay, so remember you should do a plan for each of the writing questions you do. Because though technically in the mark scheme, you don't, you won't get a mark. You probably will because the examiner sees that you're structuring your answer and normally I have seen um, example student marks where the examiner does give them a mark. So my plan would be, like I said a minute ago, formal title, introduction, my problems, solution and conclusion. So that's what I just talked about a minute ago. Title, intro, problem, solution, short conclusion. And then, but for me and the one you should do would be formal title introduction problems and I put here in my plan my problems are going to be food parking and student union then my solutions and then my short conclusion so when you do your plan don't just write down problems write down two of the two or three of the things you're going to say so um, you don't have to sort of um, make it up as you go along during the exam you have a little plan to help you structure Okay, so here is my report, which I'm going to read for in a minute. You'll see it's a page on the computer, and this would probably work out to be about two pages handwritten. Maybe mine's a tiny bit more than you'd have to do. But remember, in each thing you're going to write, you need to write two pages, really. That's what we're looking for. So let's read for it. Report on college improvements. Introduction. As a student of the college, the principal has asked me to compile a report on how the college can be improved. I have completed research and asked students a number of questions. These results will be analysed in this document. So, short conclusion, only two or three sentences. Problems. Firstly, one huge concern from the students was the catering services. 
86% of students stated that the food was unsatisfactory. The result also showed there was limited vegetarian options while the food was sometimes served cold. Although the majority of students were happy with the customer service from the staff, 26% believed they needed more people on the counter. Secondly, the students feel there isn't anywhere they can go with their friends. Let me get straight to the point. The student union needs re major refurbishment. The students find it increasingly dull and in desperate need of modernisation. Unsurprisingly, the union is very quiet at peak times in the college day. Thirdly, parking is causing major dissatisfaction from the students. Four out of five students have to pay £6 to park in a nearby hotel. There are some free parking spaces, but these are all taken up by staff. The major consensus from the students that this is unfair, demotivating and expensive. Solutions. The problem with the catering could be solved by an extra employee being on counter at all times. In addition, more vegetarian meals should be brought in, whilst the food must be served at a certain temperature. The student union needs to be decorated as soon as possible and needs more activities in place for the students. This will improve popularity with students quickly. Finally, there needs to be more car spaces available for students on the campus. If this is not possible, then the college should make contact with the local council to arrange cheaper parking around the site as soon as possible. Short conclusion, in summary I've given my recommendations on how to improve the college. If these findings are acted on, I believe the college will increase its overall performance. So in my conclusion, I'm just doing a couple of sentences saying that they're my recommendations. If they act, I think the student, I think the college will be improved, which remember is my question, how are we going to improve the college? So I've ended by saying, well, this is how we're going to improve the college. Okay, so if we look at the answer again, one thing you'll notice it is very formal, okay? So I haven't really used any slang and I haven't really, I've made it sound very businesslike. And it's quite simple, really. So, quick intro, three problems, and then in my solutions, I've done my three points, bullet points to say how I'm going to solve all those problems, and then just a quick conclusion. So, again, if we look at the structure, I've got my formal title, I've got my intro, my subheadings, I've got my three problems, I've got my solutions, and I've got my conclusion. So, a lot of students struggle with the first paragraph so why are they writing remember in your first paragraph of anything you write you're almost going to say well what's the point of the article and a lot of students do struggle with starting anything so starting a letter starting a speech starting a report so we're going to look at that now so first of all i said you only need you don't need an alliterative title you don't need a really interesting title in a report it's very business like so you just need a business like formal simple factual title so remember a, a report is basically facts so there's two options really that i came up with one you could be really simple and go college report so the the question is your principal has asked you to write a report about the college so college report is pretty simple and then the other one is report on college improvements again i've taken college improvements from the question and i decided to use this one just because i thought it was a bit more a bit more interesting than report on college improvements there's not much between them you could have used either one really okay then i need to do my intro so my intro first of all i've got my introduction subheading because i want to use subheadings in all my paragraphs then i've got as a student of the college the principal was asked me to compile a report on how the college can be improved. I have completed research and asked students a number of questions. These results will be analysed in this document. So we said at the beginning of the video, you've got to say in your intro who you are and why you're writing the report and, who, and maybe who's asked you to do the report. So my first part of the sentence here, I've got, first of all I've got my subheading, but the first part of my sentence I've got as a student of the college, so I'm saying who I am. So I don't necessarily have to say my name, but I'm telling the reader of the report, the pencil, that I'm a student of the college. Then I put the principal has asked me to compile a report. So the exam question says, your principal has asked me to write a report. So I've said, the principal has asked me to write a report. I've just put compile instead of write, as I think it sounds a bit more report-like. And then I've put on how the college can be improved. Last part of the question says how the college could be improved. So remember, use the exam question to help you. The exam question that is, is to guide you how to do your introduction. So use phrases, use words out of the exam question to help you. Then my second sentence and third sentence I've put, I've completed research and asked students a number of questions. These results will be analysed in this document. So that's got nothing to do with the exam question, but that's just me recognising as a report, I'm going to be doing research 
and then in this document we're going to talk about it. Okay, so how are we going to impress the examiner? Because we want to, to get really good grades, we've got to use things such as stylistic features, and we're going to do this by using things to impress the examiner. So first of all, pretend to care. Okay, so what I mean by that is that I don't, I know you don't really care too much about writing reports, or maybe most of you don't write worry too much about writing reports. However, if you pretend to care about college improvements, it will show you in your writing. So just for an hour, just for half an hour, try to make sure that you care, you look like you care about the question, because that enthusiasm will come through. Secondly, it's okay to cheat is tip number two. Okay, what I mean by that is you're not going to be um, looking at the persons next to you. What I mean by that is that you can make up statistics and make up facts to prove your point. Remember, you're not actually doing this report on a college. So if you want to make up facts and statistics, the only way to do it is by creating them. So for example, according to a recent survey, 76 of people said Google was their favorite search engine. So I've just completely made that up. I've got no idea um, how many people would prefer Google. However, it see makes my writing seem more factual. It means it makes my writing seem more believable. So make sure that you do that in your exam. Third way we're going to do it is by not being afraid of being over the top. And how we're not going to show that we're being over the top is that we're going to use De Forest. So remember, De Forest is direct address, alliteration, facts, opinions, rhetorical questions, motive language, statistics, and rule of three. However, in a report, it wouldn't be appropriate to use some of these things in the report. So I wouldn't use alliteration, I wouldn't use too much emotive language, I wouldn't use direct address, okay? So the probably, probably the ones I would use, I would use fact, opinion, um, some, like very, very few examples of emotive language, as long as it was relatively formal, statistics, rule of three. I guess you could also do a rhetorical question too, but one at the most. And then what I'm going to do is, we're going to pick out here the, the forest that I used in the article. So, for example, as an opinion, I've put, I believe the college will increase its overall performance. For emotive language, I haven't just put the student unions in need, I've put desperate need. For statistics, I've made up a few, but one of them was 86% of students stated that the food was unsatisfactory. And then for rule of three, again, I wouldn't use this one a lot, maybe just once. This is unfair, demotivating, and expensive. This is when I was talking about the student's car park. So that means what you should do in the exam is you should do a quick little plan on the left and you should do a very, very quick deforest plan. Although that seems it would take ages, with a bit of practice, you could probably do it in two minutes at the top of your page. You'll get a mark for it. Shows the exam you're doing really well, but it'll also help you to structure your answer. A lot of students, we learn about deforest, we learn about these stylistic techniques, but when I actually get to read people's mocks, people don't use them. I think they may be afraid of showing off, but really use them. Show off to the examiner because we want you to get as high grades as possible. Okay, so if we look back at the, the um, essay again, or the report again, the forest. So in this example, there isn't actually much to forest. This is because in the speech review, it's a lot more appropriate to use all of the stylistic devices here. We're not going to use too much. So of emotive language, the only ones really is I've put increasingly dull, desperate need. For statistics and facts, I am going to have quite a lot. So I've got 86% of students stated the food was unsatisfactory. 26% of people believed they needed more people on the counter. Four out of five students had to pay £6. But also facts, you could say, I've been asked to do this report by the principal. That's also a fact. So power of three, again, I've only done one. Unfair, demotivating and expensive. Okay, so sentence starters. In the writing exam, to get higher marks on spelling, punctuation, action and gamma, you should be using different sentence starts because as it's very boring to start with I and the all the time. So one way you can do it is by starting with two adjectives. So again, this probably wouldn't be that appropriate for a report. However, if you did it once or so, it'd be okay. So for example, bored and confused, the boy stared, stared at his exam. If I just got the sentence, the boy stared at his exam, doesn't tell me too much about it. Maybe the boy is um, worried. Maybe the boy has finished the exam and he's checking his answers. But having bored and confused comma gives me more information. So starting with a word ending in ing, so for example Usain Bolt won the gold, tells me some information but sprinting to the line tells me a lot more information. So sprinting to the line comma. 
And then starting with the word ending in L-Y, so sarcastically, so the sentence the boss asked me more information doesn't give me too much, but sarcastically comma tells me what the boss's mood is like. So there they are all together. So try and use, not all the way through, but maybe um, them one, once or twice, all of them once or twice through your uh, report or whatever thing you're writing is going to impress the examiner. Okay, so again, because it's a report, I'm not going to do too much because I want my report to be very formal. So the only ones really I have used for the LY is firstly, secondly, unsurprisingly, thirdly, finally. And then I haven't really used any of the other ones, but what I have done is I've used other connectives, other sentence starters that are a bit more formal. So I've used although, in addition, in the summary. So it makes the sentence more interesting, but it also gives it an even more formal tone. And here are all the other connectives you could use. So the ones that are appropriate for the um, report, firstly, secondly, finally, equally, in comparison, in summary. However, so remember you in this example for report, you just pick the ones that would be formal. So for example, on the other hand, isn't that formal? So you wouldn't use that one. Okay, so you're also going to get marks in your spelling, punctuation and grammar for having different lengths of sentences and using advanced punctuation. So if you see in my yellow here, I've used quite long sentences and then I've used a short sentence. And the idea of using a short sentence is it gives attention to that sentence. So for example, at the top, my last sentence of my intro is these results will be analysed in this document. So short sentence gives information to the reader, quite memorable. And again, I've used one, this will improve popularity with students quickly so again quite a short sentence um, packs a punch makes the reader take attention to that particular point and also in the middle of the um, our middle of the report in the green and I've used this phrase in nearly in all of the other writing exam videos and PowerPoints I normally use it in the intro but it didn't fit with my intro this time so when I talk to the student union I have put let me get straight to the point colon the student needs major refurbishment so one it's quite factual and it's quite report like it's very blunt it gets to the point but also it uses a colon so remember we can use a colon one if we're introducing a list but two if we're making like an important statement that we want to give attention to so for example let me get straight to the point colon the student union needs major refurbishment so using a colon here is going to up our spelling punctuation and grammar okay so there we go there's the report structure again talked it through so we don't need to again this is available on bpcenglish.wordpress.com so my a grade answer and this plan is available on that website so have a look there if you want to also have a look on youtube on bpc english and bpcenglish.wordpress.com i've got videos on all the reading exam and videos on all of the writing exam so really make sure that you look at those and lastly top tips for the report use the correct structure Use the forest, but mainly statistic, facts, and direct address. Be formal throughout. Create a formal heading and subheading. Use interesting sentence starters. Vary the length of your sentences. And like any other writing text, when you're proofreading, check your there, there, and there. Because to get a C and above, it's really expected you to use there, there, and there. I've put be formal throughout in red just because it's the most important one. So make sure you're formal all the way through. That's it for this video. Thanks very much.